the dark, deep in the bottom of an ocean trench. A meteorite hewn into it a vault, wrought with hieroglyphs, runes, and alphabets of three mage kingdoms from before the keeping of time. These foes, the great magisters, came together to seal away and entomb a common foe. Entomb is not the correct word. It cannot be entombed, for it cannot die, for it has never lived. Beyond space, in a time that cannot be comprehended, in a dimension beyond measure, those foolish and powerful enough, to have studied it, agree its subjectivity cannot be known. Yet they agree that it appears to be a Happy Chthonian. Welcome to Happy Chthonian. I'm Kristoff. Of course, I have to give credit to uh, Runehammer's RPG mainframe and to Mystery Quest, great YouTube channel for that idea of starting with a dramatic reading. Hope you liked it. I'm jacked, people! I'm excited. I just got back from Green Dragon Fest in Ancient War Village, beautiful spot in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Me and 49 other attendees were there getting games run for us, four-hour games twice a day by 11, you know, YouTube famous, excellent game masters and game designers. And lucky me, I got to interview five of my heroes while I was there. And uh, uh, just another word to say, it was amazing. It was freaking an awesome spot. My new friend, Jake House of House DM, said it best. You know, it was less like a convention and more like Dungeon Master Camp. Because most of us in attendance were Dungeon Masters, and there we were getting to eat twice a day and have an evening social with these great Game Masters and with each other and talk about uh, our hobby and everything. So just awesome. Uh, and I got to sit at a table with Hank and Fernale, Rune Hammer Games, Kelsey Dion of the Arcane Library, writer of Shadow Dark, uh, DM Scotty from DM's Craft, the maker of Easy D6, Baron Darop of Dungeon Masterpiece, and Alex Alvarez, who wrote Altered State, is a major leader in the ICRPG scene, has run games for all of the other folks at that table, and uh, they agree he's one of the one of the best Dungeon Masters around. So. Uh, very excited to share it with you. They said I could share it with the public through Happy Chthonian, and here we are. Uh, so let's kick it off. It begins, like many great adventures in media res, right in the middle of a discussion of the merits of railroading, or less pejoratively, Dungeon Master-led adventures. So, beginning with a hot take, let's green dragon. I agree. That's the point. I totally agree with you. Is that, is that, does yeah. that make sense? Totally agree. It does. It's like you yeah. push people with a really hard, fast-paced, open adventure Correct. that gets them introduced into the lore yes. and the drama immediately. It gets their investment in the system and the problem right away, yeah. and then they're like, fuck, okay, now we have options. And then options. <laughs> and now it's, how do we resolve the options? And then it, as you close off your options because you're choosing others, you go back, you implicitly bind yourself to a railroad. Yeah. yeah. So, so right? So you've experienced this in my campaigns, right? So yeah. also Altered State, you start out in that the underground place and that's sort of that VR sim, mm -hmm. right? Then suddenly you're on the farm and you're meeting all these people and you're finding places to go and then you end up on the new. Yes. Yeah, and it's like, you, know? you didn't make us do anything at any various steps, it just was to it was us, clear. There was something to right. follow. Here, exactly. here are some yeah. clues. Here are some options. Here are some places that might be of interest. And then I just prep session to session. And we yeah. cared enough about the story that we elected on our own to follow it. It wasn't like you were like, this right. is your only choice. Correct. And there were times that we kind of went, did a little bit of weird stuff on the side. And you were very masterful about like indulging that and then reminding us that that kind of was a dead end in a way. Just because there was like a thread that wrapped at the end of it. Yeah. And you're like, but there's still the main thread. Yes, yeah. or or even the even the dwarves. Yeah. Same thing. We start out yeah. game driven. The world opens up. In fact, in that game the timelines opened up. Yeah, we do start doing multiverse type timelines. <laughs> yeah. Right. Alex is like, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Yeah, but it was great. And and then ends with you're going to be in Dura Praxis later. It just it has to happen. Yeah. 
how does how's the prep differ from those that beginning DM led phase to the middle more choice phase? So, it, the, so the, that's the best part is that the prep doesn't really change, and and really, I mean, the the only piece that changes a bit is so the first maybe couple sessions you've planned, mm -hmm. right? They're a bit more quote unquote railroaded, yeah, in yeah. The term where you kind of know maybe for the first two or three sessions, kind of you know where the players are going to go and then it opens up and they're kind of telling you then at the end of the session, Hey, we, we're not interested in going over here, but we want to go over here. Well, that's fine. Then, then I just prep that. The, the best, okay. the best example I would use is I call it amusement park method, right? <laughs> you go into an amusement park, you wander around, right? You know, there are different rides. There's a big scary ride in the back, the big bad. You'll get to that later. It'll be, you'll build to that. Just like you would in a real amusement park. Yeah. Right? It's a world first. You gotta, <laughs> You know, feel what it's like to get you know moved, and then I'm going to go ride the 300 foot tall mega coaster in the back, right? So, but when you get on a ride, when you're just like, hey, I'm going to do the haunted house now, you might be on that for two sessions, right? And then you get off, and at the end of that, you're going to find some clues, or you're going to get some pieces that are going to maybe direct you to another ride, and the players are going to go, well, you know what? I, I don't want to go over here, but I do want to go over here. And you're like, all right, let's do the DR simulation. No problem. They tell you that, and you prep for that. That leg, and that might be two or three sessions, but they're telling me kind of where they want to go. Meanwhile, I'm knowing the whole time they're going to inch closer to the Giga Coaster in the back, the big bag. You have all the rides sort of in mind beforehand. It's like here's my map of the amusement park, so I know the I, possibilities. I, are... I don't. I, I generally know the opening ride to kind of hook players like yeah. we were talking about, and I. But I, I do reverse engineer the villain. I usually have a clear idea of the villain. I usually have a clear idea of what they want. And what I have found is if you know those two things, who the villain is and what they want, and maybe something's not like a dream what the final encounter might look like, you know, mm -hmm. right? If I have that idea in mind, everything the players say and do and ask and what you throw up makes sense because you compare it to logically internally what the big bad is like. Yeah. Xander, by the way, he's the one who coined this term. He calls it the poltergeist method. All right. Poltergeist method. Welcome. Thank you. Why is the delay, guys? <laughs> Because oh, you know the poltergeist is in the basement, but you never see him in the first scene. You just hear the rattling of chains. <laughs> that's and then, and then every, that's and then, a great and name. And then the book move, and then finally you build to the fight with the demon in the basement. Sander, he's open up a blog and start. Yes. Sander. Yeah. yeah. It's going. It's going. Yeah. yeah. That kid is. Yeah. That kid is yeah. ridiculous. So so well. Like, he's like, he's yeah. ridiculous. This is great. Maybe we'll ask all of them. Twenty minutes, and I'll yeah. over there again. <laughs> I'm boarding my bed. This why are they? Why is it so early? They're a bar bar. It's a beer bar bar. bar, bar. <laughs> okay. The hobbits go to bed at nine. That's bar, why. Bar. The word barbarian comes from. They thought anyone who isn't in Germany, what or, or Rome, whatever they're saying, just sounds like bar 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 bar. bar. So they call them barbarians. <laughs> oh, is that really where that comes from? My man can get behind that. Like you. Bar, 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 bar. <laughs> <laughs> we do that all the time. <laughs> we do. Okay, we're ready. What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, the cabal. It's it's rolling. I want to oh, be wow. just conversational and uh, player led. Uh, you know, so I'll throw five questions on the table in succession and react to them, reject them, talk about them as you will in a group. I feel like the one of the. Is that cool if I have beer on the table? It's very cool. Yeah, okay. as long as it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. The games have been good at Green Dragon Fest, and the conversations have been amazing, so I want to keep that conversational thing. And I want to start by saying nice things about all of you, so brace yourourselves. That, uh, oh, yeah, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, I, oh, I expected that. Oh, 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 and then later. I'll be, I'll be coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go on. Oh, <laughs> don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> I knew somebody would notice my oh. <laughs> True to form, everyone else is like, uh, Scotty's like, yeah. <laughs> my reflection about you is meeting you, I've seen, yeah, I haven't heard you say a negative thing. I have not heard you say one negative thing. It's no, like, is it, no. when, you, when you speak, it's positive. Yes. I just... <laughs> wow, that's something to aspire to. Yeah, I, I like to be a positive person, you know. And uh, this hobby, we all love this hobby, and you know, keep it positive, right? 
Yeah. You, feel you feel it. You feel You're it. just not working hard enough at cracking it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. And it's okay. You're a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this shit. And if there's a dark side, I'm going to find it. <laughs> you can't just play into a god stop. It takes time. <laughs> my my words for Anchor was hilarious. That I've seen you online and you're really funny, but in person, again, again like the joy I feel from you, you <laughs> it's just constant. It's just constantly funny. <laughs> and I also aspire to your. This is how I feel. This is what I want. That I am this. I'm there. I'm different. the worst with that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't deny that. I'm like a donkey. <laughs> Donkeys That's really are very vocal about how they feel. <laughs> Whether it's happy or sad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you call those fucking socks. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the socks thing, dude. I really didn't mean that. That's me. <laughs> and both were totally sincere. <laughs> oh yeah. Very oh, yeah. true. Yeah. 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 That's me all I get. Fitting you should be at the center because my reflection for you is that you bring people together. Oh, thank you. You do so very well. <laughs> and you I got to play with. Yeah. I saw the setup the first room was like, here's a bare room, there's some chairs in it, and you're a bunch of prisoners. And I was like, that doesn't seem bad. And it was like, by, the, by the time we went into the second room, I was like, <laughs> you have some guards with like crossbows and swords. That's yeah. it. And I was just like, as on my edge of my seat as I've ever been in a game. Oh, so, awesome. And you push the pace or something, it's just magic. That's awesome. Thank you. So, you pump something yeah. into the air. Yeah. Uh, I played with you as well. It was amazing. You are, God, what's the word? I, I, I heard it. There's a, a word that begins with S that means doesn't say much. Mm, that's not spoken. I'll think of it someday. You, you, right? Man, you speak. Your silence as a game master was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was more. That was the most exciting silence I've ever had. For hours. I say a word. Silent, and then when you do talk, it always feels like when you're talking, it's wise. This is when you're talking, it's kind of, when you're talking, it's wise. That's how I felt. And I got people around on this table who said, who's my dungeon master? Is Alex. Who's my best dungeon master? Alex, who do I play with? So you just get praise from top tier world dungeon masters and it shows on the table. Well, come on. First of all, I, let me just say in response to that, because it's super kind, but I feel like an imposter. <laughs> and and the truth is, like I'm okay. I'm sitting I'm That's sitting insane. in a room with literal giants in a hobby. <laughs> and especially especially Hankering, especially Scotty, who I've known a long time, have taught me a ton. And then really and truly, I would probably not be sitting here if it weren't for those two gentlemen. Now I've known Kelsey, a, you know, a, not as long as those two, um, but she has been super impactful in my view of the hobby. I've known Ryan not quite as long. <laughs> But, but even you have taught me things about the game. And probably the best thing you do is you challenge my assumptions about the game. <laughs> and, and, and you have such sort of like a, like a, like a, like a beginner mind, like, oh, I read this, and oh, I read this. Like, really, truly, all of you have made me better in the best possible ways. So I appreciate the praise, mm -hmm. but, but really and truly, like, it, it's, it's kind of scary to be here with these cats because they're amazing. Thank you. I also feel afraid, so yeah. Generosity. <laughs> Kelsey, you the first one of the first conversations we had we were chit chatting and you asked, Oh, are you interested in publishing adventures and that sort of thing? And I said yes. And I just felt like a beam went on and you were just like so I just felt so supported. And the way you spoke was so kind and generous. I was like, here's what I did and you can do this. And I can't just, I'm a wash in gratitude for that. And I've seen you turn that beam on pretty much everyone you talk to, it seems to me. It's just like when you're in a conversation with somebody, you're like leaning in energetically and you're there 
and you're, I don't know, giving kindness. Thank you so much. 100%. That's yeah, very accurate. so true. It's very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, right? <laughs> Awesome. Question the first. The fast. Uh, it's have it's winding down now. It's kind of happened. Y'all ran a bunch of adventures, and I guess my wondering is uh, your expectations of it, and then your experience of it. Compare how do how was it compared to your expectations? Hmm. I knew I'd be tired by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a good way. Yeah. I knew I'd be tired at the start of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We put everything into it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it, it was something really special about doing something like this with your peers who you admire so much, and I feel like we're all kind of like pushing each other a little bit to really bring the heat. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I did some things I've never yeah. done before in my games. Like it's just. Yeah, you guys all made me do a better job. Kelsey painted miniatures. Yeah, I like did. they look ridiculous. She's like, oh, this is like finally, a miniature. Finally, finally, we got her. Long enough coming, you know. Ridiculous. I think expectation to me is always has nothing to do with what we actually do. My expectations are all, as, as you well know, as all of you well know, we've been talking for months about this, all of us in our own different dimensions, right? right? right. And my expectations are all centered around what I can't control, which are, which are a million things. And that's where I put my expectations. In the meantime, I'm doing the things I do control, which is like my, my craft, my passion, and what I do with all my time. That I feel I've had on lock for the last two months because we've known about it for three months or more. Yeah, at least. Yeah, and yeah. basically since you even proposed it, I didn't even know what the hell it was. <laughs> but what I did know is I was, and I told Ryan this, I was like, I'm in. And I wasn't sure what it was, but it was just like, you know, it's his it's his debut thing. He's my homie, of course, I'm fucking in. So, so I've been a complete savage with my, with my work, with what I do. And I feel really satisfied with like the sessions that I ran. The players obviously make it what it is. Um, but I think it's funny because I never had any expectations that, about like the games. <laughs> I never even really thought about it. That's funny. I don't think about that. That's just what I, that's just my, my waking up. That's my existence. What my expectations were all about, like where are we going to sleep? How are we going to get there? Is everybody going to be like happy? Like, is there going to yeah. be like a weird wind thing that makes somebody, something fall on somebody? Is somebody going to be like confused? Like, is somebody going to be out in the bushes, or are we going to, like, be missing a person, or yeah. is somebody going to knock out a van, which those aren't even my fucking problem, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? But that's where my expectations were kind of like, I just want everybody to have a really good time and for it to be smooth, and, like, including myself, and, like, <laughs> and the whole time not saying a word about, like, the games I was Right. So, to me, that's kind of my, my, my sort of contrast for this event. It's like, the games are absolutely awful freaking hook. And the event actually too, to your credit, came together smooth, especially considering the number of variables. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where my expectations live, was in all the, the fringy details. Yeah, I knew the games would be awesome. I trust these guys to do games, you know, more than I could trust anyone. So the other stuff I feel is, is far harder. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I, especially you. I mean that's the yeah. other stuff is your whole stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to echo Hanker's, you know, comments too. You know, I was a little bit worried about my own game and, you know, and the prep, but more so I was worried about the guest experience. And, and I really worried about that from, you know, just a leadership standpoint, from a, you know, just a logistics standpoint. Um, Hank and I had several conversations about it, you know, where we were just like, you know, like, what is this hotel situation going to be like? And, and in part of it was we had never seen the venue before. That was a huge unknown and a huge question mark. And so in our minds, right, and of course, you know, human brains being what they are, like, you know, either we think the worst or we invent stuff if we don't 100% know the answers. And so, you know, I was worried about that. A lot of those same variables, where are people going to be? How are they going to get there? What's it going to look like? What's that evening hours going to be look like? You know, will I have time, you know, even in terms of like service towards all the guests? And I really view this as an act of service, you know, and I wanted them all to have a phenomenal experience. But then yeah. would I also have time to hang out with my friends like this yeah. and, and see these wonderful people that I've grown so close to? 
You know, like, would we have time to, to hang out? And it, all this, all those sort of questions, you know, but as far as the terrain, you know, I was just fiercely like, you know, I went through four miles of water to make all those little fiddly bits. You know, like, that was like, like, you know, like crazy workshop and stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm worried about like, you know, like, what's this shuttle going to be like? Yeah. 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 I have to say, hold on. I have to say, that shuttle is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can't get a better show than what was there. I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, can, but not for the amount of money. <laughs> Thank you, shuttle guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 shuttle guy is awesome. I love it. Shuttle yeah. guy is pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Shuttle guy, yeah. <laughs> you need to talk about your experience last. All right, no, I don't. Because <laughs> oh, I've never done something like this. Like, yeah. this felt like two weddings. Back to back. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe even three, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the whole the whole morning to night, like catering, like you know, getting shuttled around, different people coming together from different lodgings, mm -hmm. like all yeah. yeah. Like, like a wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's really been cool because even like at conventions like that we go to, right? It's sometimes we sometimes don't cross that well because we're all in different parts and yeah. it's uh, kind of scattered, but with this there's a central place to go for everyone goes to lunch. Right. Yeah. So I got to sit with people and enjoy and talk to them and have lunch where some, where sometimes with other regular normal conventions that doesn't happen. So it's really not, it's really nice that that that's a set, yeah. central place. And even just like me and you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go to a con and we can't even hang out. Right. Right. We try yeah, to, it's like, like, where are you? Right 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 I, I think I'm in Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So we're looking at you. You're right over there. <laughs> Calling you to be in house. Okay. <laughs> Later, I gotta go to do a thing. Yeah, but it's checking about this guy at a con. Right, so it's here. It's awesome. so bad. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> I've been on a live stream, yeah. and he's supposed to come in, and we've had to send Professor Dungeon Master. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a Scotty ring. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. Bob had to come back and get me in the hotel. I was wandering around. <laughs> so for, for the money shot, the for the money shot, Ryan, like, what, do you, what about you? You had you have to go last. Like your expectations versus you're sitting here right now. So I don't really know if I can even call them expectations. It was an imagination of like what. I would have liked to have had, and I guess that is an expectation. <laughs> and it was, of, yeah. it was an expectation. <laughs> I don't even want to like. There's a weird negative connotation that I have with the word expectation. A hope. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a hope that you know. It was. It was really interesting that what I wanted to happen and I thought would happen was more intense and extreme than what actually happened. And I'm glad it didn't mm -hmm. like, I thought more people would have been a little better and, you know, more gaming going on. But I think the number of people that we had here, like, I think the, the level of intimacy mm -hmm. and the fitment of people was damn near perfect. Yes. Like I, I could see maybe having five or six more people here and maybe like more one more game session going on at a time but like it would be too crowded yep. like you've got to have uh like i really appreciated the this like you guys described the central like i really wanted an experience where it felt completely normal to just sit down with all the dungeon masters and all the game designers and just chat and bullshit like you're sitting down with your family like that, that's what I wanted. So, you know, and I feel like that was, after, especially after hearing you guys, I feel like that yeah. was achieved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted an event also that was as approachable as it could be. You know, like the, there's a lot of, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with it. I'm exhausted. <laughs> you? Uh, yeah. You slept 11 hours in the past four days. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but, uh, that that was the main thing, and I had a failed expectation of where do what do I want to say? Like I don't know. I feel like maybe there was too much Green Dragon. Oh, <laughs> <my>. <laughs> like, a ham-fisted bean. Yeah. Like now, now I'm like 
Was it too much? No, I thought it was great. Was it I thought it was great. You know, and I say that, yeah. but then I look at Haley Von Bosa, yeah. who has played D and D for eight years and has never encountered a fucking dragon. Yes. Right. And right. she encountered, fought, and killed a dragon. Right. This right. Right. So you know, but like that kind of, and it not only that, but like just to reinforce the the community, like being able to sit down at dinner and just share a few accolade stories of like, this person did this, this person did this, this person did this. These were all awesome things that were like, we had a family uh, or a, a couple had a wedding uh, anniversary here, which is wild. Daniel Cause like, Morgan. like I had, I had lingering in the back of my mind, please don't be the fire festival. Please don't feed the fire festival. Oh, God. You know, like, oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, like I, I've been really stressed out about that. And I was like, just land the plane. Just land it. Just land the plane. Just land it. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a beautiful landing, it just has to land safely. <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, the it, it's been it's just been really cool and awe inspiring, honestly. Like I, I I would sit exhausted after dinner and just look around at the table sometimes and like fuck is this? <laughs> like what's what what? Like it's just, it's really mind blowing. That, that's all. I don't. I don't really have anything more to say about expectations. It's just mind blowing. You made something special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You did make it something turned, special. Yeah. It turned out really lovely. Yeah. And, and, and frankly, I think all the buzz that I heard, all the people talking, all the people you know, interacting with each other, and, and saying hi and hugging, and folks who came up and said, "Wow, it's been great to meet you know a, a lot of folks that I've admired for a long time, maybe from a distance, but now I feel like I have a connection and a relationship." Like it's just been a wonderful event. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, after that first night when everybody was just having a blast and the food was outstanding and, and everybody was talking gaming, like all these people, people were super passionate about gaming. Oh, yeah. 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 And like I breathed a sigh of relief. And yeah, then, after yesterday, yeah, that's when it really, like, like, it sort of broke. Yeah, you know, like, as far as yeah. the mood broke and chilled out, it was yeah. kind of different. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we had finished that day. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a, there was a real difference. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, this is, this has been great. Yeah. And work day one. And good work. Yeah. yeah. I get a lot of people saying, so next year. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I said it. I, oh, the first thing I said to him was, oh, what are we, are we having this one, one number two? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Let the main point down the road. This is amazing. I'm going to live here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm emotionally always. Right. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, right. Because the pictures are cool, but they oh don't do God. it justice, I don't think. No. no. This, okay, that's that's something that's really hard about this place. Yeah. This place photographs miserably. It does. It <laughs> photographs. It's so not photogenic. Yeah. It is. 80 times more cool than it is. Yeah, it is. Photo. Yeah. Walking yeah. down here, coming to the village itself yeah. is just, wow, this is just, you know, the pictures you just never know from pictures. And yeah. Just, the pictures do not do it justice. At all. The end of the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I was over here, like, planning where all the sessions should go oh, yeah. so that I had one maximum space and distance so that there was the least disruption from gaming tables possible. Yes. Right. And two, that if there was terrible inclement weather, whether that was it was too hot or too muggy or too right. rainy or windy or whatever, there were also alternate locations that still would wow. be like acceptably spacious. Mm-hmm. Like that that day when I took those photos, yeah. the weather was it was like 45 degrees and sprinkling. Wow. I was like, I've got to show them where they're gaming. Like yeah. I need that to was do definitely that. a heavy moment. Uh, and I remember I, I, I like thank you hardcore because yeah. you said thanks for sending us yes. individual pictures because that yeah, was really the nice. questions nice were just to see. swimming. Yeah. yeah. Nice uh, to see. I was like, I've got to show them where and, you're gaming. Yeah, and it wasn't, yeah. I like how Alex puts it too. The, the questions aren't necessarily like I want X or I want Y. Yeah. It was more just like, what is what the fuck is this, this? thing going to be for a person who comes there? Because I want to show up and like make it super fun. And there was just no answers. So that first set of photos you sent was probably the hugest set of answers. Yeah. But also kind of like, hmm, well, like boulders. And then the first thing that went through my mind was like, well, if I'm going to jam in some fucking boulders. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Uh, and, you know, and, and, you know like, I, I, like, it's hard to overstate how seriously I think everyone sitting here takes this. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, when we saw those photos, like, me and my wife were 
pouring over those books. Right. Yeah. We were the days. Wow. And, and we're going, okay, <laughs> let's be like, oh, let's take cool. scenario oh, one. <laughs> scenario <laughs> one, I'm in this room. Okay, easy. No problem. Let's move to scenario two. I wind up in the boulders. Yes. <laughs> and then we talk, and then we're like, actually, I think we should go out to a bar and talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my three God. Hours, yeah. Three hours. We were wow. Saying, well, you know, are you really going to try to do like a scary dungeon crawl like in the daylight? Yeah. In right. the boulders? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you know, I can't with a straight face say yes. Yes. Yeah. And we would do that with every one of those photos you sent. I mean, we were we were not screwing around with the the level that we were taking it seriously, you know. So those photos were were huge, and we were also thinking about what about rain, what about mosquitoes, what about heat, right? What about like? And then I was like, oh, oh. Kelsey has this like weird flappy map or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it going to fall like in the wind? Yeah. 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 All this stuff was coming up, and it's like, what about music? You know, you're outside, it doesn't sound that good. Like, okay, well, maybe fuck music. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so heavy. Oh my and god. Like, yeah. yeah. I really appreciate it. Like, <laughs> <we're, laughs> yes, everyone's oh, sitting fun. here. Okay. Everyone sitting here went through that process. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah man. Oh wait, that's was, Scott, he didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, oh Baron's got this. All I need to worry about is my adventure. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't worry about one thing. That was the energy I needed. By the way, he's got me. He's got me. Telling me like, I'm just proud of what you're doing. Oh, <laughs> I that was I was having a really hard day planning. Oh, and like I suddenly realized, oh shit, I needed like five more pieces of information from the guests that I didn't get, hmm. and I had to like frantically figure out how oh, to contact uh, all of them get them. <laughs> and and get the information to like print production like yeah. before a given deadline, and I was like. But you sending me that message on that day was just like I'm so I know, it was, it was <laughs> so much. I was like, I, I needed that energy. Oh, I needed so that. <laughs> I, yeah, I was just like, Baron's got this. I'm just worried about my adventure. That's it. I'm not worried. About it. He's gonna. I can run an adventure anywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can do it anywhere. I, at the beach, I, whatever. I can run an adventure. Yeah, yeah the that's beach. I mean, that's true. My, my concern is like <laughs> getting the stuff ready. Right. I double back here and comment for question two. Okay. Uh, yeah. That was question one. <laughs> that was question one. Question one. Here we are. Good work. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> you can cut. You can cut. <laughs> one was the best. Two is the dragon. You mentioned the green dragon. Everyone made adventures with the green dragon. How was it either like reskinning adventure to that or making one? And then bonus card part of that question. What's the green dragon symbolize to you? The green dragon. And, yeah, yeah. Kelsey, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah, Kelsey, well, start. I think that I thought it was really interesting to have a common theme because to me the green dragon symbolized our unity around what we're planning. Yes. You know, like we all were kind of like, what's your green dragon going to be, you know? <laughs> what are you doing? It was really fun to have that as a touch point for everything we were planning. So it felt like, to me... I hadn't, I hadn't ever designed something where there's so much coordination across a theme, mm -hmm. across so many other people and systems. Yeah, yeah. Like, in fact, I can't think of a time I've done something across systems that had a unified theme. So, and we had tons of system representation, yeah, yeah, like yeah. five, six, yeah. seven different systems. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was really special. I love that bit about it. That's awesome. all I, yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> there's more to say. Yeah. 
it's fun because like when you when you lay down the phrase um, during the adventure of the Green Dragon, it, like it, it, with Scotty, you know, we got to sort of the end of the dungeon crawl, and guess what? There's a fucking Green Dragon. I mean, okay, this is very literal. Yeah, yeah. But it's also just there. It is. There's the Green Dragon, right? Is it? Is it like mind-boggling that there's actually just one there? Well, of course it's a Scotty McGuffin, so it's not what you're actually. So there's a hidden McGuffin. Now reveal the real. What's magic about it? Or if your if your dragon is like a xenomorph, or if uh, one of I think one of them was like the players were dragons. Well, his was a sword, and mine mine was like a giant sword that transcended like thousands of years and stuff. But whatever, it doesn't. Honestly, it kind of doesn't matter. What's no. fun is like you're dropping almost like it's like sticking the logo. <laughs> yeah. It's yes, like you know exactly. Like, you know, exactly. It's cool when they exactly. make you wait that's for the name that. of the movie. Like there's a whole part of the movie that's like <laughs> ten minutes long, and then they show you the title of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's baller as fuck, right? Yeah. So, so same thing with like announcing there it is, the Green Dragon, and you've basically waited for this cheese ball moment. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes, you know it's coming. It yeah. doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You're still just yeah. like, there it is. Andy on a beach. Right. Right. <laughs> like Scotty said. So, so for that aspect, I, I do think that it had really good dividends. Just as a cheese ball logo. Yes. To yes. throw yeah, into totally. your, And totally. whether or not it creatively drove us further or unified us or something yeah. like you said, Kelsey, I'm not sure. I felt like I was off in an archipelago of madness. <laughs> <laughs> you always are, dude. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but regardless of that, that logo effect, I think was something that if I were a player, I would be kind of, well, like I wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. That I was like waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, guys, where's the, you know, when's where's it going to come out? Come on, you going to make me wait for the end, or is it going to be like the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, the fun becomes... It's, you know you're going to get spoiled, right? So uh, how are you going are you to get spoiled? Right, exactly. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yes. You know, I think what was really fun was, and why, like I said this in the adventure design prompt that I gave all the dungeon masters, was like, he, it has to include Green Dragon, whatever the hell that means to you. Right. Like, I was talking to Justin Alexander, he decided to not do it, and I'm kind of glad he ran the adventure he went with. Just because I heard like all of the psychological games that the players went through with like his, his all of his players were were dragons and there was a whole thing about them becoming Tiamat or not and what it means to be and not be like they had mm-hmm. arguments about this wow. mm-hmm. it was really cool wow. really noodly and you know philosophical but one of the things he was thinking about running was like a noir detective thing inspired by the Maltese Falcon, but instead it's a sculpture of a green dragon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like that, that's, that's the cheese. It's like, oh, it's just a sculpture, you know? So that's the cheese. Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> there, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. The title of the book in the book I found. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the children's novel called The Green Dragon, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that was the goal. I wanted, like, when, when I did that, I wanted to see, like, what is all the weird shit that people are going to come up with? Right. Like I wanted to, I wanted to <laughs> yeah. see all these things. Cause part of like my personal DMing style is people will go up to an armoire. What's in the armoire? I don't know. Roll a D six. Okay. Yeah. There's six things in there. We'll go around the table and each player will decide the six things that are in the armoire. As long as it's a wardrobe thing. Okay. It's in there. So, you know, I'm always trying, you know, part of it comes out of laziness. I'm just trying to offload my mental logic onto other people mm-hmm. because I find when you get more people sharing the ideas, you get some really wackadoo shit that's really inspiring. Yeah, you so do. you know yeah. you like feel for the game <laughs> right in the game. <laughs> Grab that stuff again. <laughs> yeah. 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 You like one of the children's book title the Green Dragon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's pretty nice. It's like a dead body with a book on it. It's like a dead man. <laughs> I look at that body, back. He's and, and, he's, and he's got a note from his son, like says, "I love you, Daddy. Have a good day at work." You know, oh, no. <laughs> the giant, the green dragon. <laughs> um, I don't even know what symbolism means. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think Ryan was just like, "Yeah, every scenario has a green dragon." I message him back, and I'm like, "Does every?" 
scenario have to have a green dragon? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, I think I'm thinking about running sci-fi, bro. And he's like, all right, I don't care if you run sci-fi, I just have a green dragon. I was like, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> green dragon's and then, you went into a, oh, then you went into an idea vortex. Yeah, and I, I'm like, I guess you know more. Like, I really, you know, I identify with Xenos. We're, you know, we're best. <laughs> I identify Xeno. <laughs> uh, how, how many, okay, so I'm going up to a green dragon Xenomorph. How many nested mouths? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Before the boring gas comes out. Yeah, we didn't get that car. The last one's green. <laughs> oh, there it is. Right. But, but suffice it to say, I did not put like, that much thought into it, honestly. <laughs> it's like, here's sort of what I want to run. Like, I can make a dragon work, no problem. Like, oh, let's, yeah. let's just, let's just, let, let's just, let's just press. Yeah. yeah. You, in your adventure, I just got to say, you say that, but yours had the biggest oh moment for me because we saw the dragon, the xenomorph mini black, and you said, now you got this black xenomorph in front of you. And this is like, you, I would love how he said this in black xenomorph, but with all the loading, the green loading lights, it may as well be a green. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Was there, was there like symbolism there? Or like, no, no, that's not symbolism. You're just talking uh, about lightning. Yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. Pause. We'll cut it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask again. Was that before or after I was posing by the sports car? It was after. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's how we knew we were cool. So, yeah. <laughs> I think on question three. Yes. 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 I think go for it. Question three. Do it. Yeah, I think you should unleash it. Let's do it. We're going straight to the philosophical bedrock. Now, those are the warm-up questions. This is about value judgments. And uh, what, when you're running or preparing a game, makes the game fun for you as a game master? You know, what makes the game? Maybe it's a procedure, mechanics, or approaches, or philosophy. Uh... Close that. <laughs> <laughs> Quit what? standing there. Get away. What? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Did you win a contest? <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. Oh, Thank God for the interview contest. I won the interview contest. I'll leave that in. <laughs> the answer is a solid yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, I have no idea what he did. Any other questions? You must have won a contest. Oh, my God. Oh, that is epic. Oh. Yeah. Can I have one of your million lights? Yeah, ma'am. Thank you. So the question that we should, do you want to re ask it or what makes it fun when you're preparing yeah, yeah. as a game master? Yeah. Yeah, what do you oh, what do you like the most? Yeah. Tough question. I love the feeling. I mean in particular at this con. It's not really a con fest, really. It's a fest. It's a, fest. It's a con. This is have, have shitty anymore. hotel ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no bad carpet. And no real sensation of togetherness. Right, right. Yeah. Even yeah. though we're all crammed in the same damn room. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's this one in particular, the thing I had the most fun with, which I think maybe what I find fun can change over time, like it's to my taste and to the system and whatever. But um, I had the most fun figuring out how I was going to corral the characters in in the environment they were in into experiencing like the target dragon setup. That they, you know, I was like the most fun I had was trying to figure out how to move all of these varying different groups towards the same outcome where they would have sort of a shared experience. Yeah, because every one of my groups did the scenario super differently. And so there were times where I was like, oh my God, are we gonna, like, are we gonna land this plane? Are we <laughs> <laughs> gonna see the dragon at all, you know? And then, it, yeah, it was fun trying to guide it that way. And it felt very much like I didn't know what was gonna happen. And, and, and I was like, I love that feeling in the game. Figuring out how you're gonna make it all happen in the moment, yeah. I think for me, I, I went back to my, my root motivational core of my being, which is that as things were developing and like, especially like Kelsey, I knew basically what you were going to do just because I know you and your shit. <laughs> and, um, and so it was evolving of like, you know, this, this group right here was going to be doing this stuff. I'm sure those other guys are awesome, but I don't know them. Like I know you guys. Um, and so as I'm thinking about it and learning more, 
it, it, we're, we're kind of fretting over it a little bit. And I realized there's no way I can do anything that is in any way similar to anyone else. It has to be utterly like vomit worthy different. <laughs> so I had to throw everything out. Everything had to go. There, there is no dungeon. There are no bad guys. There are no good guys. There is no time limit. There are no walls. There are no floors. There's nothing. And just, it's a complete void of possibility. And just what do you do? And how am I going to like, just cold water shock them? You know? and, and that is where I started. That was like my premise of how do you do that? And that, like, that was the challenge that I sort of attacked for, for the concept. So that's how I came up with the, the meta LARP concept that I did, which is that you're LARPing as yourself. In, in the destruction of this very room. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're in a fantasy land that we're imagining. You are you. You are here at a table just like we are now. And like started toying with that. But that became the fun of it is like, how do I not compete with Kelsey for Dungeon Crawl? How do I not compete with Alex to do like cinematic? How do I not compete with Ryan to do like manic energy? How do I not compete with Scotty to do like fucked up imp sounds? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, I know I won't do any of it. So yeah, that, that's my answer. That's how I came to what, what I wound up doing. Is like trying to throw away everything and like what's left. And that was really, really fun. The 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 fear and the shock on everyone's faces when I did all three of my things was like to me, that's like sadistic, super fun, you know, like I do believe that all game mastering has a sadistic aspect to it. And oh, I okay. really, <laughs> I really <laughs> love leaning in on the sadistic aspect. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. So that's why Dave Scotty's so happy. He gets it all of us. It's, yeah. it's the <laughs> only place. It's the only place. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't believe any of this in this kind of I'm just mining. I'm mining. <laughs> it's like Dave Duck. He's down there. <laughs> but anyway. But that, that is, to me, was the big fun, was that, that cold water shock on the players. <laughs> that was a blast. <laughs> Other people yeah. fun. Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I, I love, I'm kind of known for my terrain, so I'm expected to have terrain, and I love to have terrain anyway. It's not like, it's not like work for me. I mean, it's work, but it's not, I love doing the work, so it's not a problem. And I'm always expected to have terrain, and I love doing it. But I like to keep it as loose and po as possible. Though even though I have terrain, I mix it up and I change stuff. And I had a lotion room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Straight to the lotion. Great, <laughs> <laughs> had so many people come and tell me where's the creepiest, <laughs> best thing, the scariest encounter I've ever had. <laughs> What is this room doing in here? <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Talk about the cold water shock. <laughs> the lotion. Yeah, I didn't even craft that. Jesus. <laughs> 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 You know I love my goo and my slime. You have a lot of weird goo and slime. Yeah. And you know, gross. you want to lick that? <laughs> Touch it. I love your dumb leading questions like that. Are you sure you don't want to lick it? Oh, <laughs> Scotty, I don't want to lick that. I was saying, you guys can jump I mean, down okay, there. Baby. <laughs> yeah, cool. there was a bridge. They heard they were knocking the enemies off into the water. And I, they heard the, the water, and they're like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, you, you guys could just avoid this encounter altogether and jump in the water. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, we're not jumping in the water. <laughs> 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 no. No, Scotty. But it was funny because I had, like, this encounter. No one jumped in the water and fell in the water. But 
<laughs> I had this encounter down there where these little friendly frog people would befriend you and like ask you to kill the snapping turtle that was eating them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was very touching, and you know, oh, yeah. and, uh, there was a treasure pile down there. You know, because the dragon put different, sadistically put different treasure piles around the lair traps to kind of get players to you know mess with it mm -hmm. and so that was one of them you know <laughs> but no one went down the water <laughs> like nope <laughs> so wait what's your thesis here the fun is lotion <laughs> <laughs> fun is in the lotion sorry <laughs> i'm not going in there <laughs> never i never I love just thinking how I can mess with the players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. How I can just mess with the players. Like, change their, like I had Doom Turtle. Like, if you were like, Where, what is this Doom Turtle? Yeah, that was super <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it was this turtle with a skull. Oh, oh I'm the Doom Turtle. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, welcome to the Dragon Player. I'm the Doom Turtle. You're all going to die. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> That's the whole fucking thing. There's nothing there. There's nothing to do. Like, and? There's nothing to do. You're going to all die. Oh, no. That goes back under the bridge. You know what I mean, bro? Okay, bye. Oh, that's good. That is fun. That's good. A lotion. A lotion. A lotion. It's also his thighs were dry. That's not me making that up. That's you. And he's so I like, pantomimed the guy's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Get me. We weren't even in there. We only had a scout go in. And look, the scout just like, no, even in there. And he was going to fuck out. Thank God. Do not explore that room. Do not talk to me. <laughs> not us, though. Yeah. <laughs> first time ever, I'm glad I wasn't in your game. <laughs> it's the first time ever. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Oh. Yeah, even Grace was like, nope, I'm out. Because <laughs> you scouted out the yeah. room, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, God. So for me, it's always a fun challenge, one, to just roll a bunch of random shit on a random table and slam it together into, into a seriously cohesive and fun adventure. Because I find that when you put like really unlikely stuff together, you get stuff that's fun and surprising. Uh, and and it just forces you to work with dumb shit that you normally wouldn't choose on your own. But also part of this was, for my adventure was, you know, especially as a armchair DM on the internet, like we can talk a lot of bullshit and, you know, we get into like really dumb newly <laughs> game design on the internet, but like testing, like seriously testing, how much can you use these, you know, philosophical and game design concepts that we all talk about to build a legitimately good dungeon? Like, does it actually translate? How many of these things that we actually bullshit about on the internet, can we condense them down into a good dungeon? So I like started clicking through like, what are all the things that I have talked about on the internet? And can I compress that into one dungeon? And most of the stuff that I've talked about was in this dungeon. And it, it's I was like five room and Zelda. Yeah, like I combined like yeah. six different dungeon design paradigms yeah, into yeah. one dungeon. Yeah. And like the way I feel about dungeon crawling was present in the dungeon. Like all, like I just compressed all of that into one thing and ran a dungeon crawl. And it was start, you know, I was like, screw the players. They're not going to have any. I, 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 I told the players, like, you all start as prisoners with one piece of equipment that's not a weapon, and you get to roll it randomly. I got a sponge. What am I doing with a bottle of glue? <laughs> Rolling prisoners. <laughs> oh, I should change that. It's no longer. A How did you get that bottle of glue into prison? <laughs> The idea of trying to listen to your own advice on the internet is pretty fucked up. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, that's yeah. Wild. Well, yeah, I, well, I was like, 
the people who are coming here are people mm-hmm. that like I have to make good on the fact that I'm not an influencer. Oh, right. You know, like I is the fun. shit that I'm saying actually really good? Like, can I say that stuff and make a good adventure based on it? So, you know, th- this was the litmus test, and I think it passed. Mm-hmm. I think it passed. Cool. Well, I'll awesome. say briefly, my takeaway from your session was, again, I said it was, I was the first room. I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. It was like a vanilla dungeon. It was like, yeah. and it rocked <laughs> so hard. You. I was, if you did, like, show me pictures of her, told me about it, I'm like, I don't know. But in it, the way you ran it really yeah. brought it to life. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I really like, like, because the unusual twists are the unusual twists because they're unusual twists. Mm-hmm. See, everything else has to be vanilla. You know? I don't know. Like, people who get, like, like it's fun to listen to, like, Monster Lore videos, like Josiah from Dungeon Dad. It's fun to, like, drive around Knoxville and listen to that shit when you're in the car. Like, I'm never going to, like, dig up the stat block. There's some really weird esoteric undead creature. No, I'm just grabbing the lich stat block, right. and I'll give him two more spells because that's what he needs, and that's fine. You know, so everything's vanilla. It's just like the twist that's interesting. So <laughs> anyway, that's really opposite. To me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe the question is, what do I find pleasurable about DMing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what is? <laughs> Yeah, what do I, what's the most fun part? I guarantee it. It's not the worst. <laughs> you don't know, you haven't been in the worst. You're, of everyone, you seem the most against them. <laughs> yeah. Go knock it. Go knock it. Go knock it. Go I will say Scotty loves those first things, and it, <laughs> and it works. Uh, what do I find fun? I'm a big kid at heart. I I love preparing all those little pieces of terrain, like these little beds, with these little lockers, these little mm. chests. I yeah. love having. I'm because I'm a kid. Look at all these toys, and now that I painted all that and have that little toy set that I can use now in future games, that brings me so much joy. Yeah. The the, the other big thing that I would say is I believe that DMing is an act of service. I love taking care of people. I love that I have a small part in helping other people. And for this fest in particular, people I've never met before, strangers, walk away just having a phenomenal experience. And if I can play a small part in that, like, whoa. And I know these folks feel the same way. Like, it is just, it, that is probably the most pleasurable thing that I can think of in terms of DMing. And, and truthfully, when people are like telling stories about your games and about the adventures they had and these connections and these events that happened and, and it stands out and they remember those things, like that's the type of experience I want all players to have. Yeah. And, and so if I can carefully yeah. 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 that. And that, you know, you get to that point in the game where things are bouncing off you mm-hmm. and they're and they're and they're bouncing back. Yeah. And it's just this it's just this feedback loop that yes. is happening with the players and the game master. And that that is an amazing feeling as a game master. Yeah, I is. chase it like a drug. It is yeah. like a drug. Yeah, I chase it's it. It's like addictive. It's so fun because it's just you're you're just you're out of the normal world and you're just focused on what's happening in this fancy world that you've all created. And it's just amazing. It is, yeah. Feedback is a good word too because it does reach a point. I guess it's sort of like um, you know, like when the voice, like the opera singer, like breaks the glass. <laughs> right. So so the opera singer is singing a bunch of other shit, right? It's not like the only note they sing is the glass breaking right. note. So there are a bunch of other things that happen in your session yeah. where the feedback doesn't occur. Yeah. But the feedback is that moment where the, the pace of the bullshit is fast. Yeah. The humor <laughs> is tempered with sadness and seriousness. Yeah. And the, the action is just the right, like there is a moment where it's like kind of goes, like it does vibrate. Yeah. And it's definitely not the whole session. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's that moment there's of the zone. Little, yeah, there's a few little, yeah, yeah. little white hot spots yeah. where you could definitely feel it. I know you do because I can see it when like you're, you're game mastering and stuff. It, it, there's a, there is a bit of a. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then you're kind of, you're kinda, you need to try to gather. You yes. get it going. Yeah. So you're kind of going, oh. <laughs> and then someone else joins in. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, oh shit. And, like, oh, yeah, the glass is and that's only like 40 minutes into a three hour session. You're like, uh oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happens to a lot of guys, so, so it's not a big deal. Question four. Yes, question four. Question four. Before you get into the. Uh, so I'm, here's, here's a, a, a idea that you are all leaders of a movement or a region of the role playing game hobby, a uh, one region that you're all in, that you are leaders of. And over here, maybe it's like rules is written, wizards of the coast and there's the OSR, but like you're a region like that. What defines or describes, so this is kind of a collective question. What's your manifesto or principles or. Yeah. Epic. Holy Whoa. shit. Epic. Whoa. That's wild. First of all, that's cool to think that that's, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that is really interesting. Is that he sees it appropriate to ask that question. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. 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 I want that to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. What do you guys so, think about that? Look, I don't know. Are we the Ryan School Movement? Yeah, because we're the RSR. We're some kind of particular cadre of the of the writing and publishing and YouTubing sectors. You know, like we we're often seen together or mentioned together, and our work really influences each other a lot. I would agree with so all So we're of some that. kind of cohort. So what is it though? I, mean, I don't know. We're definitely a cohort. Yeah. And it's cool yeah, that you exactly. see that. I mean, one, <laughs> what is it? One, 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 one thing that I will say sort of binds a lot of the things that we do is a lot of us tend to run rules like systems. Mm -hmm. We tend to favor rules that sort of get out of the way so that we can focus on the moment and the fiction. Like, like I, I think that is almost universal around this table. I mean, it's, I mean, certainly easy D6. I see RPG, I see RPG, like each shadow dark, uh, even, uh, you know, um, uh, crown and skull, like death squad, like all those sort of systems that Alter we state. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. like all those sort of things, you know, is, you know, dead zone, like all that sort of stuff. <laughs> you know, we, at least I believe my perception is, but we, we tend to like rules that kind of get out of the way. Like that's not a forefront for me. It really is moments in the fiction and, and, and making that player experience like you know the mm. best that it can be I I if, this, if, feel free to disagree if our cohort is defined by what we have in common um i, I it'd have to be uh, there's not a cool word i can think of it but it's something like a, a like a wake awakeness there's an awakeness to to this little fam the heavies is what we call ourselves <laughs> <laughs> but there's an awakeness to it and uh, I, that's not quite the right word, but I do know that this is something we all have because we all are quite different. But there is something that I know about the GMing of the people sitting here that you're interviewing so kindly, which is that we we become mega animated when we game master. Yeah, and that yeah. is not yes. and that is Absolutely. not a rule. Yeah, one hundred percent. Totally agree. That is not a rule. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there is, is, there is, there is, there is, there is a lot yeah. of. Uh, sedated game master yeah we're not even sedated that's kind of a negative word right yeah. more like a calm game master and you could do super accurate rules uh, uh delivery you could do super dramatic gravity and story changes you can do incredibly detailed crunchy characters that have cool synergies that grow over time all those things are possible but those things possible or not don't necessarily unify us i know about all of the heavies that once the, the and in, in my case, especially the first split second that I'm game mastering, <laughs> yeah. I, I am in absolute maximum energy delivery. Yeah, totally. And, totally. and, and I do totally. think we share that. There is an awakeness. There is a heavy duty caffeine power load yeah. that happens. I know it with Scotty. Uh, Ryan's fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. Scott, Alex will think, make you think that it's on a slow cook, but that's just because he's Stanley Kubrick really scotting your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Kelsey is giving you like giggle bubbles while she's like removing your feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we, yeah. we, I, I know it about all of us. It's like yeah. once it's like time, it's time to just go like through the roof with everything. Right, right. And and that also means sometimes suspense. I'm not just saying it's like spazzing out. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it is yeah. the wakefulness to the right. extreme. And right. having played and done this hobby for so long, I can say that like the vast majority of game masters that I play with 
don't do that. Mm-hmm. And it, it is because it takes a somewhat manic energy it does. to deliver it. Yeah. That is exhausting. It is exhausting. Yeah. And not everyone wants to be super exhausted. Right. Yeah. Um, but I know that it unifies us, and maybe it's why we kind of get along. Yeah. yeah. Because you kind of know that the other ninja is going to be like flying past you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a, like a zip line guy. You're like, you know, and like, it's like going up the ceiling or something. You're like, what the? You know, and Alex is on a glider. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know, so there's that ninja competition level of energy. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know how to package that into a, like you said, a region, which is a really cool idea. Yeah. But, you know, and I do think Scotty is one of the inventors of that concept, even going way back. Um, I, I do think that at least Scotty is the one who publicly revealed it. It may have existed a great yeah. deal before yeah. that. Totally but agree. you are Yoda for a reason. It's because Scotty put it into the world in public. Here, here. And was going, yeah, yeah. like, in the first five seconds of the video. Yeah. I have nothing to add. Yeah. 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 So that's why Scotty gets the Yoda action figure. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the only thing I would add to that is I would say probably all of us get along because I think we're all critical thinkers about the hobby. Yeah. But like we all sort of have that sort of analysis about it. You know, we really think about it mm-hmm. and what works and what doesn't. And can we be strategic about it? Can we make it better? And can we, you know, what can we do to maximize fun? Right. For, right. For, for, for others. Yeah. Yeah, and it is a never-ending, like, five-sided cube of our discussions. Yes. Yeah. We discuss together as a group, but we also, I know this, we all have parallel secret discussions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it never ends. Yeah. yeah. It's just, and it's part bullshit, and it, it's part, like, well, I don't know about this. It's detailed. Sometimes it's serious. There are photos of the things we're working on. And so, yeah, that makes us, I don't, we just don't have a cool name for the region, though. No, we need. Yeah, yeah. I like the heavy, so it's always stuck for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The heavy is good. The heavy is good. Yeah. We, we kind of have some kind of momentum we pursue in what we do that's sort of yeah. unique. Like you said, I couldn't have said it better. That's, Momentum's yeah. a great word. It is. Yeah. 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 We're the heavy RPG cabal. <laughs> <laughs> HRPGC. <laughs> round or the fire or frost or acid <laughs> round because what's your favorite dragon adventure encounter that you've ever played in or run? Bonus points if it's not from the past two days. Oh, Just man. a fun one. A little to cap it off. Cherry on top question. Yeah. Oh, my um, players uh, upset a large red dragon that was a random encounter and they provoked it into breathing fire into the forest that they were in at the time and they started a regional forest fire and then completely failed to control it and it burned down the entire forest the campaign was taking place. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Mine is sort of twofold. A long time ago, old Hankerin ran me, I think, and Kelsey, you were there, mm-hmm. through a dragon encounter with his badass of all dragons, Durothrax. Mm-hmm. And at some point, we were on her back, yeah. uh, flying through the air, and, and we were sort of worms to her, you know, we <laughs> fell off, and we ended up in this lair, and she had this weapon called the Tesseract Dagger that could literally end anything. If it, if it cut you... You didn't exist anymore, oh, and your wow. lineage <laughs> was the ultimate item of destruction. And then later, I was very privileged when I could DM for Hank and Kelsey and our friend Joe and run them through a, a whole adventure, like a campaign that featured Durothrax. Those are Bimbles. As, as a villain, yeah. And, yeah. and Bimbles the chicken. Bimbles. The, the time-traveling chicken. <laughs> 
Um, and, and, and ultimately culminating in, in this awesome scene where Hankerin had self-sacrificed to save Joe and Kelsey. And ultimately, Kelsey held both the Tesseract dagger, which was the ultimate item of destruction, and this other dagger, the ultimate item of creation. And she had to make a choice. And faced against the most evil dragon in all the land, she just simply chose that the daggers had never been created. And the heroes ended up finding themselves on the veil, uh, still friends, still family members. Yeah. Um, and that, that was just such a privilege uh, to, to play in his campaign that kind of started that theme and then to take it later and, and run it with Durothrax and the Tesseract dagger as, a, yeah. as, as motifs. Nice. That, 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 that those games meant the world to me and still do. Mm. I always tell people, I'm like, Alex is the best DM. That's one of the adventures where I use that as an evidence point. Oh, that's so wonderful. You may, I, I got teary eyed during the last scene of that, and I'm like, no, whatever. So we're, like, we're, when me and my wife rolled down the grassy hill together. We yeah, did. yeah. Yeah, we were together again, and yeah. I had never died. Yes. It was crazy. Yeah. Because yeah. that whole timeline had been erased. That was crazy. Truly crazy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you two stories for the price of one because mm. I can't decide between the two. <laughs> one is kind of cheesy, uh, but I had been playing in a game session for three and a half years, in a campaign setting for three and a half years, an old friend of mine, and he had the curse of the dreaded ones. Like, he was a, he was a we were playing fifth edition of all systems. He had the most terrible curse of the onesies you could possibly imagine. This guy could not hit the broadside of the barn with a sword when he was standing in the game. Whenever we saw him, he was really easy. He almost went to toe. Like, the guy never, I, I'm not joking, he never had a critical hit the entire campaign for three and a half years. Wow. I bought him new dice wow. thinking that his dice were jinxed. <laughs> yeah. Never got a critical hit anyway. Wow. Nothing. Until finally we get to like this final campaign ending scenario where a necromantic witch and her her dark red dragon Draco Lich pet was completely destroying the city and the players were the only thing stopping this. And watch the camera there, buddy. Uh, he finally got his first critical hit of the game. Yeah. And it was <laughs> a high enough level in fifth edition to where he had another attack oh, wow. and another one. <laughs> and he had three back-to-back -back critical hits. Wow. Yeah. And Whoa. one shot the dragon half of the boss encounter in one round of combat he did something like 312 wow. damage across all of the all of the attacks because he just unloaded all of his radiant damage into this thing and it was critical so it was doubled it was that was like the most like the dice gods really mm -hmm. shined in that moment and that was really cool yeah, the other sure. one was i designed okay so open secret now I designed the encounter that I ran here prior to this adventure. I just reskinned it and retooled it a little bit. <laughs> For shame. What? What? <laughs> but I designed it. It's like the lotion on his skin. I designed it for Hank's Microcon Outriders. And that was my favorite encounter with the Green Dragon, specifically because of one of your players. At the beginning of the session, or at the beginning of the thing, there's all the players are, or all the players are running characters in prison, and the overseer of the of the the prison encampment is testing the the characters. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Like the most basic <laughs> vital health check. Can you go into the mine and start working? Here's your pitchfork. Get to work. <laughs> and, for some reason, one of one of the players just latched onto that, <laughs> and when they finally got to the end of the game and the dungeon was collapsing around them, and one player was left standing, and both the dragon and the player were within five hit points of dying each, and but it didn't matter anyway because they had completely destroyed the dungeon and it was collapsing <laughs> in on itself. 
the la- the last winning blow, the player killed the dragon and said, you saw me, you heard me, and I went to work. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, the callback. That was the most exquisite player role playing I've ever seen in my life. And to all, oh, I don't know how that can be unseated from the best experience with like the chemistry that I had with all the players, but with the, was absolutely phenomenal with, with that player specifically to just be able to pull on something like that. Him killing the dragon and saying that in the final blow was fucking exquisite. You know, it can't be me. Amazing can't. moments. Amazing. Yeah. Moments. Yeah. 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 I haven't played that one. I've, I've <laughs> you, you did the paper Tiamat thing? Well, it was a green dragon instead of Tiamat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is a, a local news quality segue. <laughs> um, and by the way, it's a crazy question. Thinking back, it's really fun about the different dragon encounters over the since the mid 80s. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Um, uh, so just with that out there, well done. Very good at what you're doing here. Um, but I guess I'd have to choose the end of my college campaign. So we played Cyclopedia, the one with the guy riding the horse on the cover. So I, I guess yeah, yeah. that's called like 2.5e or something yeah, like that, yeah. right? Or so that, that book, we, we, we brutalized that book. Um, and we played all the way from like basically the last three years of college. And in the dorms, you know, you can play D and D just like you're just smoking crack. Let's face it, college isn't that hard. <laughs> so, so, anyways, we we're, were definitely going deep, and uh, I was the game master. But back then, also the idea of sort of a, an N, uh, I guess what you call it, GM NPC now, or yeah. GM, it wasn't like kind of shunned like it is nowadays. So, so I did have a sort of a character that was I had sort of stakes in that was basically just like a little bit of a heel bot that would stay in the back. Um, and anyways, we played a Karamakos, if everybody remembers that old hex map. Like, this is just playing out of one single book, and it's the Cyclopedia book. So we played the hex map, we played the room, we had fortresses, we had the whole deal. All, And I'm not talking multiple copies of one book, literally one book with a capital yeah. L. We would share the one book. So we, it just, it, there was something really great and we had reached such a point, we had done spell jamming. And so we're about level 17, 15 at the, toward the end of this. And it's like midway through senior year. And at the whole time, the Duke of Karamakos, who in that book is like sort of the king, uh, it was revealed and we used a lot of rolling like I do nowadays. So things are surprising to me too as a game master. I don't just say what's true. It's kind of revealed via a series of dice rolls and stuff that actually this whole time it's it's actually just fucking Tiamat. <laughs> T- Tiamat has been using the, the entire royalty as a puppet. Whatever. We also know like we graduate school pretty soon. It's like, you know what we should do? Fuck up Tiamat. <laughs> so so we do a lot of homework on like, let's make sure that we make this what it needs to be because we're about to get into some shit. This is basically five dragons in one combat. So there's a whole arc to build up to how can you rig this encounter. Mm. So we had all of our characters were basically derivative Xeroxes of Dragonlance characters. So, you know, we had a Sturm wannabe, we had a Kender wannabe, and our main character, Steve, who is now a a stroke recovery um, doctor at uh, Johns Hopkins, probably the smartest person in the room, with the least amount of hair. <laughs> he plays like this Raceland character. So for those of you who know Dragonlance, right? I mean, everybody does, right? Raceland is like this sort of sickly mage, but who harnesses like in, insane amounts of power, especially at level, level 17. Shit's ridiculous. So he comes up with this plan to basically have this like giant sort of beam. It's kind of like a moon beam. And what we're going to do is force Tiamat to fight us in this beam using these summon spells and then uh-huh. preventing it from leaving. So we're going to try to weaken it in this beam and fight it. Okay, so that's the big, to kind of set the stage for you. And this is on like the third continuous day of fighting Tiamat. And so what winds up happening is it's just, we just can't do it. It's a very like Pathfinder moment. You start to see like how many rounds there are, what the, you know, you've been playing for years. 
even at that high level, like the wish spells are gone. Like we got the problems, like, like life drinker is like melted. And like, we're kind of thinking like, it's no, like the next breath weapon, there's no way. And so once you see it, then that is the moment that the twist happens. And this is a, a four year check that you're cashing. So one by one, you got to choose what you're going to do. You're not going to win. And after like the second character death of being like, I'll do 20 more damage to the white head or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Utterly futile, but hey, that was great. You know, good job. I guess. <laughs> So Raceland, I think his name in our, in our campaign was like Rastine. <laughs> so he sees that these characters, they aren't going to be able to do it. And he actually just switched sides. Whoa. <laughs> so he's just, like, he's just like great mother Tiamat. He's like, am I not worthy? And the rest of us were just like... <laughs> <laughs> like I can feel the chill even in yeah. my body right now. Whoa. Just and that was not like a joke or a gag or a thing we had talked about. That was not a fucking. That was not a MacGuffin. That was legit betrayal. Oh, oh man! And so yeah. then he just like floats over into the beam, and we're like, literally, it was just like fucking when Frodo keeps the ring. I see you not, Kristoff. This was not. And, or it did, and it was just like, ah! and then the, our last actions were basically like screaming futility as we're just wiped. But, but like the lightning breath weapon was the worst one, oddly enough. Yeah. And just scrapes us off the freaking encounter. And then my DM NPC is this little guy, Gedrin. He's kind of like Frodo, I guess. <laughs> like, he's like a Kender. Just scraped off the encounter. You know, and like negative 220 damage, like just like there's no negotiating it. And then Rustine or whatever, he just hovers back into the beam and like deactivates it. So Tiamat returns to her full strength and he floats over at her side. And then I was like, I'm the GM. And I was just like, that's the campaign. We don't even know what happened after that. Wow. Oh, man. Man. Oh, that was the end of the <laughs> I know it's a long and fun story, but basically what happened is we could not beat Tiamat. And that was the biggest like dragon memory that I have. Oh, wow. is we just couldn't do it. Just I, I don't know if we were doing things wrong or maybe we were undervaluing something we had, you know, because this is this it is a complex game. You can lose yeah. track of yeah. a spell or something that you forgot. But yeah. So our, that massive wipe, and I think maybe that's kind of what taught me. Like sometimes, like the wipe is the is the funnest ending. Yeah. Which is what I do now in like a ton of my games. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that one was just a cold chill of fear. That was a great feeling, and we, and we still give him shit about it. As you should. Still. Or way to go save real people's lives. What's Tiamat doing? <laughs> yeah, it's Tiamat. Yeah, that's your most stress. So that, that's fine. That's all. Oh. That's my favorite. Thank you. Yeah, all in college. Wow. All right. <laughs> you got the last word. Yeah, geez. All right. Back in the old days when I valued alignment, there comes this story. <laughs> <laughs> So we were starting a campaign, and one of the players was like, oh, I want to be a bad guy. I want to be, I want to be evil. And I'm like, okay, I can handle this because how I set it up was the characters were all on a quest to get to the end, but, uh, but they like the evil character was on the same – had to get the same trajectory, okay. right? So he couldn't mess up the other players too much. Or he would screw up his own chances to get there, right? <laughs> it's like cutting the wheels on the tires for the the people that you're in the car with, right? You don't want to. You're not gonna. You're gonna only be evil a certain amount, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, before the main thing that happened, <laughs> I have to tell you a little story. So they're really low level. They're in this village. They're trying to protect it, and uh, these dragon minions are attacking, right? And um, they take refuge in this this uh, church, and uh, they're like, uh, you know, oh, thank you for protecting us, heroes, and blah blah blah. 
and uh, come and get a blessing of the gods, you know, so they're all lining up, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> getting, you know, the water on their head and all this stuff. And the warlock's just, nah, 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 nah. you know, he gets a blessing and he's like, I'm like, you're not feeling very well. <laughs> and so he's like, and I'm like, you start foaming at the mouth and you drop to the ground and start convulsing. And he's like, what? Because he was evil and he tried to get a blessing, uh, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like on the ground going like this, popping his mouth, right? And so, <laughs> and, so, oh, man. and so the players are like, and so the townspeople are like, he's a Jesus fly, kill him. <laughs> and the townspeople in the church. So the heroes had to protect the other character, right? <laughs> so they protect him, you know, and so he didn't learn his lesson anyway. So that was the first time that he didn't pay attention to not drinking the good Kool-Aid. So <laughs> later on, way later on in the campaign, where they're trying to convince these council of good dragons that had a grudge against the elves that they need to do this alliance because they need, the world is being destroyed. They need to get them together, right? So they go to this council, you know, I had this really cool setup with this, you know, I had I had big dragons, you know, models there, and I had like a glowing globe in the center of the room, you know, or in the center of the table, and like these kind of cool, you know, setup. And so, and so the gold dragons, like, you know, um, you know, we we you know, we if if you get the elves to a official official apology to us, okay, we will, you know, we will aid you, you know, and. And the, and, the, and the gold dragon's like, would you like a, you know, would you like the blessing of, you know, of uh, the platinum dragon? And, you know, they're like, of course we would. Of course we would, right? <laughs> and the warlock, you know, you know. <laughs> 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 it's over. It's a blessing, right? And I had like a glowing globe on the table. I said, okay, okay, guys, everyone touch the globe who wants the blessing. So we all, they all, you know, physically put their hands in the middle of the table and touch the globe. And I'm like, Hmm, okay. <laughs> Warlock, you are, you're blasted back 30 feet and you're dead. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, <laughs> you're sick. This happened to you earlier. Like, don't. <laughs> what are you doing? So so they're like, and, the, and at that point, like, he would do evil stuff, right? But it was supposed to be secret. So what I do in my game is I don't hide and pass notes and all this crap. It happens in the open. Any evil or anything the players do happens in the open, but the pl the players know about it, but the characters can't act on it because they don't know about it, right? Or, yes, so, yeah. But they knew he was shady. Something was shady about him, right? And so when he dies, they're like, there's this moment where they're looking at each other and like, should we resurrect him? <laughs> <laughs> And we're like tenth level at this point or whatever, so we've been playing a while, you know. And he's like, he's like, you still puppy out, please, you know. You know, he thought they were, and they were just letting him hang for a little bit. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> so they did, yeah, they resurrected him, but you know, um, it's a moment. Like he did learn his lesson to not touch good things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want to teach him. Blessings. So <laughs> I like that Scotty's favorite was, and I killed him. <laughs> Here's the evil. Let him wait. Let him wait for the resurrection. Yep. It's all right. Oh, that was five questions. Thank you all so much for your time. Unless there's any last words you want to say, this has been really meaningful. Thank you so much. Well done, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Really well done. yeah. yeah.